NBA fans, we hope y'all enjoy what we did for the Atlanta Hawks. But now we jump on into the Boston Celtics and what they can do heading into free agency. Y'all already know we're going to talk about it plus more right after this. Thank you for tuning in to the number one place for your basketball fix, NBA Central, hosted by the Cognac Boys. Welcome back to another episode of NBA Central with the Cognac Boys. I'm Bobby. That's C-Dub. How you doing, my guy? Man, I'm feeling great, man. We talk about the Celtics today. What, what, what we got going on with the Celtics? Man? On the real. First and foremost, if y'all want more for the Cognac Boys, hit us up on all social media platforms at Cognac Boys. If you want everybody here collectively, go ahead and hit us up at NBA Central Pod on all social media platforms. And, of course, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh. Before free agency even started, before the, the draft even came around, the Boston Celtics, they went out and made what I consider a major trade. They got yeah. Marcus Smart up, and then they brought in Christoph Porzingis. Yes. Christoph Porzingis' base salary is $36 million per. Yes. Jason Tatum, $32 mil. Jalen Brown, $28 mil. And keep in mind that these guys are eligible, both of them, for the Supermax. Yeah. They end up trying to trade Malcolm Brogdon, but Malcolm Brogdon, I believe he came up, it came up with some type of injury, so he will stay. They got mm -hmm. Derek White, Robert Williams, all these guys, they take over like 146, 150 million towards the Boston Celtics salary cap. And if you include the others, they like two million away from the luxury tax. <laughs> <laughs> so the question will be, man, what else can the Boston Celtics do? to build out this roster headed into free agency? Oh, the Boston Celtics, I think they made the move of the offseason so far, even though it's, it's relatively re very early. Uh, they picked up Porzingis. Now, when I look at their roster, the Boston Celtics will be contending for an NBA championship next year and should be the favorite in the East with this roster. Uh, but they do, and it's very important, even though it's light, and I think they can accomplish this this really easy they have to do a little light cleanup on this roster bro they got to get rid of some of these miscellaneous uh some of these miscellaneous players like Mick blake griffin and jace jd davidson and all these names jay they got a lot of players on this list that they got to take care of i think they still have a solid core to compete so i don't think really they need to make a lot of moves uh i think um I think Jalen Brown will be here. I think uh, uh, Tatum will be here. You got Brogdon. You got Horford still here. Maybe you do something with Horford. Maybe it's time to you for for the part ways with Al Horford. I say yes, it is. Um, you pair away with Luca, Luca, Luke, Luke Cornette. You got to get rid of some of this, some of these loose ends because you're strapped for cash, my guy. You're strapped, Max, <laughs> bro. And you got Peyton. Clayton Peyton Pritchard got to start getting playing time. I don't know what the hell was going on in this in this uh <laughs> in this playoff series that just passed in the year previous. He got you all the way to the NBA finals and he played and then he couldn't happen to not get on the court. I don't be understanding these things. Um they drafted the young kid Jordan Walsh. Uh let's see how how he progresses. You gonna send him to the G League or or is he gonna be part of the roster? Grant Williams is still here. You know, Robert Williams is still here. So you still relatively got a core. You just lost Marcus Smart. If it was going to be somebody that you had to lose to make this team better, that would have been a player for me. It would have been Marcus Smart. He's solid, but he's not real. Then I'm going to get out. <laughs> um, I think this team is is great, is 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 better than last season. I think they're better than the team that uh, went to the NBA Finals. They're going to be so tough to beat with Pazingas if he plays, if he stays relatively healthy. They are going to be a load to deal with in the NBA. I agree with you. I definitely think that these guys, they do got a lot of uh, things that they need to touch up on. I definitely think that with uh, sending out Marcus Smart, who is collecting a decent amount of money, and then replacing him or retaining Malcolm Brogdon is still good because you still get a defensive uh, guard who still you, has the before length. Before you go, was Malcolm Brogdon originally in the trade and and they couldn't he couldn't 
pass a physical, so they took him out and used Marcus Smart. I seen a report like that. Did you see something so like that? I think I think originally he was supposed to go to LA okay. Clippers. So then that physical thing did happen. So they had to go and look at other avenues, hence why Marcus Smart ended up in Memphis. So okay. it was still another trade that they went out and got. But I still think that now retaining him, you still get a defensive guard who has the size, the length, the three-point shooting. And I honestly think is a better facilitator than Marcus Smart. Now he gets to come in, get healthy, and be your starter point guard and still help out the team in that aspect. And then if you look at, you know, they still got Derek White, who I believe is a solid combo guard. But I definitely agree with you on Al Horford. I think it's time to cut ties with him. But I also I think Grant Williams, since he is a restricted free agent, I think that these guys will have to just let him go. Um, I think that that'll be something that they can't retain. Hence why I think I agree with you 100 percent that they still got loose ends to tighten up when it comes to that four spot. We know that um, that most of these guys can slide up and down the lineup. And I think that Joe Missoula is going to want to play small. But I also think about this. What do you think about? When they do go small, or what do you think? I think what makes them better is this lineup I'm about to say. You can get either Brogdon or Derek White, since they always want to keep those guys in, uh, one of those guys in. So you can go either one at the point. You got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown at your two or three. Then you can get Robert Williams as your shot blocker at the four, and Porzingis at the five. My goodness. And that'll be vicious, in my opinion, yes. especially on the offensive side, because now – if you run and pick and roll, you got you a lob threat and Robert Williams. Or if the defense collapses well on, on that alley-oop attempt, now you can kick it out for the three with poor Gazingas or somewhere else. You can swing that ball pretty damn well because the other guys are still decent three-point shooters. What you think yeah. about it? I think I think you're right. That is a killer. That is a killer lineup. But they have a lot of lineups like you can toss up. You can switch Robert Williams with Grant Williams if they retain him because – I think they are retaining him. I think obviously, yeah, if you, he's I think still, they he's still keep, locked down for a couple more years to come. Yeah, so so you could put Grant Williams in. It's just what makes the Boston Celtics better to me is offensively they got mature. I've been using that word lately. Yeah, they got mature offensively. Uh, Pazinkas know how to play this game, bro. He a twenty what twenty two twenty five point per game player, bro. Yep. Uh, he is going to space this floor like no other. Al Horford can shoot the shoot the three, but he is not Porzingis. Yeah, Porzingis shoot that thing from thirty. Bro, <laughs> he what the fuck? And that's just me being clip. goofy. But he got that clip, and he can play pick and roll. He will dunk it on your fucking head. You're not gonna block it. He's seven five, seven four, right. something like that. <laughs> the oh, guy real. got some athleticism now, and he can handle the ball. Y'all watch and see. This team is going to be terrifying to deal with, bro. Terrifying. Yeah, I'm, I'm with I had you. a question for I oh, got go one ahead. more statement before you go. go ahead. What really brought it down to Marcus Smart, they was like, is Marcus Smart a better player than Derek White? And they went with Derek White, bro, because I think Derek White is a better player than Marcus Smart. He, better, uh, he a better two-way player, offensive and defensively, than Marcus Smart. So they made their choice on that foot. And and I also okay, I get I'll answer the last one. Go ahead. No, I was gonna with that question. I was gonna I get a nod to Derek White too, and I think that the reason you had to move one of them is because the redundancy yeah. in the play. You know what I'm saying? Marcus Smart, give him his credit. You know what I'm saying? Defensive Player of the Year, solid defensively. Does a lot of flopping that I don't like, but you can't you can't the he you can't knock him for what he was able to do and accomplish. But my question is, and I believe this is a question we have to ask real quick. Can we agree that Marcus Smart was the soul of the Boston Celtics? Absolutely. Hundred percent. Okay. So my question is now who steps up to become that new heart and soul of the Boston Celtics on this team, bro? Ooh, Ooh. I got, I got, I got, I got three candidates. Feel me on this one. Number one to be the obvious one, it'll be your best player in Jason Tatum. But that's not mo that's not likely. I don't see that in his personality to be that type of guy, even though he a pretty, you know, outstanding young man. When you see him off the court, when you see him yeah. doing the post game, uh, the second would be Robert Williams. He is the defensive anchor on this team. And mainly when a defensive anchor is, they they be the leader, they be the soul. 
and three would be Grant Williams. Uh, Grant Williams, but but that's that's a roll of the I dice. I think Grant he, about it though. You think he out of there? I think he stays yeah. though. He's gonna get a little emotional though. He might lead you down the wrong path. But it's either them three to me: Robert Williams, Jason Tatum, or Grant Williams could be the soul of the team. Okay, so you saying bring him back? So if you do bring him back, you want him to say, "I'm gonna make both. <laughs> I'm gonna make both." <laughs> so you want him back to say, "I'm gonna make both of them." I'm gonna make both of them and then go miss both of them, bro. Miss As a coach, I would have, bro. You ain't playing this game. <laughs> yeah, sit, sit your ass down right here with me, yeah, bro. That's one of them to where you 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 gotta discipline your son and you don't want to hit him hard in the back of the head, so you just muff him. Go sit your ass. Yo, him a little bit. <laughs> boy, oh, yeah, but I think uh, when when it comes down, who I think the harder the, the who the new leader needs to be, I'm gonna go with your second choice. I'm gonna say Robert Williams. But then I also think that it could potentially be Jalen Brown, bro. And this is the reason why. Okay. Most of the time, when we like, where the hell is Jason Tatum? Jalen Brown is doing this thing. Yeah. Most of the time. We be like, Most damn, where Jason Tatum at? In the whole game, Jalen Brown, he cooking. I think he can take that step forward and be the new heart and soul of the team. What you think about that? Uh... I'm a, I'm a disagree, nephew. I think you made sure. a great good point, but I'm a disagree. I, I see this is why I'm just going with uh Jalen Brown just in the Boston Celtics being having a great season next year. Cause right. I'm not pretty sold that Jalen Brown is a hundred percent in, bro. Ooh. It's just too much shit going on. You can't be putting out that that energy. He can he put out that energy, maybe not intentionally, but it's it, it might be unintentional, but he put that ener energy in like he's not all the way full in. For so sure. I'm going to say it couldn't be him, bro. Okay. Couldn't be him. That's fair. I'm with you on that. So now we move on. But so what do you, you early on, me and you both said that they, they need to tighten up loose ends and get this thing together so they can fully form this thing out to be the championship team. What do you think is missing? Can you name a player? that you think that they should go after or look at? Yes, they creeping into the luxury tax, but we all know that these guys have the option to either pay it or not, and you are already over the cap. It's an house of luxury. Now you're creeping on to the luxury tax. If you can somehow clear Al Horford up out of there, you free up about $10 million, and then you, know, you can still cross into the luxury tax. You will be a few million over if you get somebody that's going to command more than $10 million. Yeah. Any players or any anybody you looking at right now that they can add as a free agent, bro? Because I got okay. I got about two. I got one, man. It's gonna hurt my soul, and it, it and I'm just praying that this don't happen. I feel like uh they need a another guard, another shooting guard, it, uh, maybe just another guard, a shooting guard. So I'm gonna go with they need a player like Kobe White. To come off the bench because I don't think they believe in Peyton Pritchard, i.e., he didn't play in the playoffs really last season. So they need another guy like that that could come in and get them a like nine to ten points a game. You know what I'm saying? For so sure. I'm going with white type player. Okay. Me personally, the first player I'm gonna look at will be Kelly Oubre. I think nice. that I I think you have enough defense all around the team. I think you got enough. But you still need somebody with size and that can still get his own buckets and who is streaky. Kelly Oubre, yeah, he have his moments. So he'd be like, bro, what are you doing? But when he own, he own. And so I think that if you get another forward like that, because, bro, you got interchangeable guys who you can swap in and out with Robert Williams and Porzingis. So I think that somebody that can come off the bench and who has come off the bench in his career before, Kelly Oubre will be a yeah. good look. What do you think about that? I think that's an awesome choice that that fits in my my criteria. What I was saying, you believe you believe they need another player to come in and be like a scorer. Like that's his that's his um, that's his profession. He just a, a expert scorer to get on there. Not not norm, not like a the all world defender, but they need somebody to get in there and get them buckets. Even though they got Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and Przingis, they need somebody off in, in Brogdon. They need a scorer like Kelly Oubre or Kobe White. You you believe that? Yeah, I'm with I'm with that. I think that, bro, you got you got these centers in there and you can and you can bring one in and sit one down and bring one in and sit one down. However, you want to make them interchangeable. And then, you know, what I'm saying Derek White, Malcolm Brockton, those are not small guards. So no. and I think they're I think 
Derek White is more of the combo. Malcolm Brogdon can fit in elsewhere too. So I think that you just need that that fire to come off the bench because yes. we're keeping it a buck. The only fire that they had coming off the bench was really Derek White. So now yep. if you get Derek White, who can come off the bench, and then you get Kelly Oubre, now you got two guys who could provide that spark and then, you know, potentially fill in whenever he's needed just in case a Robert Williams goes down or a, a, a um Derek White got to sit down for a game or two because of injury. So I think that a player like that could be good. It will be tough because of the money. But I definitely see that they can probably snag him up for sure. Hey, nephew, I just found out their biggest problem. Who's starting that point guard? Are you starting Brogdon or are you starting Derek White? I think Brogdon makes the start because I think he's the better facilitator. You think so? He just won six man. Derek White, you think so? They can go either way. I wouldn't be mad at it because uh, you still got two great guys on the wings. So that's okay. Brown and Tatum. You st- I, think you st- I think the offense still will start and finish with one of those guys. Oh, so you don't think that is that much that dramatic or that tough as the tough of the no, nah, because Marcus Smart started at the you know at the point guard and they still was able to you know make a run and go to the finals with him out there. So I think that uh obviously you get a nod to Marcus Smart as a defensive player over Brogdon, but Brogdon ain't that far off defensively, and I no. think he gives you more offensively. So okay. That's going to be interesting. You to just see. got to get healthy now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That's going to be interesting to see. I think Derek White get the start, maybe. For sure. I think they, and, and Brogdon, he was six man. He was six yeah, man. Yeah, wouldn't be mad at it. I still yeah. think that off the bench, they need that punch. So, we'll give see me the starting five real quick, though. What's the starting five? I got Brogdon, Brown, Tatum. Oh, who plays the four? Shit, that's a great Robert question. Robert Williams. Right. If you go Robert Williams and uh, Porzingis at the top. Then their bench is really, really thin. So they got to figure this shit out. You're right. They got to figure it out. Ins and outs. They got to figure some shit they out. They got to figure some stuff out. Do you keep you do you keep Blake or Al Horford? See, they got a lot of shit. You might Black, have to keep Blake will Al. go. Blake will Blake you let go. him walk. You keep you let Al. him walk. And then you, you can mess around and keep Al. You can yeah. see what they, they – they, look, these GMs, they got to get smart with this yes. money. Yes. You get, if you don't want to go get a Kelly Oubre or if you ain't got the money to look at a Kobe White who can give you some more scoring – you definitely got to figure out who can go ahead and give you something. Because you don't need a 15, 20-point score off the bench. You just need somebody that's competent enough to put the ball in the bucket when oh, needed bro. to either gain, regain, you know, close the, the, the deficit, maintain the, the lead, or push the lead forward. That's all you need. Oh, bro. Kelly Oubre, that ain't going uh, to be cheap either. It's not cheap. That's why I said they got to figure so, out a way. You think they lose some of that? Some they of that gonna have team. to lose somebody. Oh, I'm talking about somebody that matter. Maybe Al Horford. Like I said, I think he, he don't matter. He, I would say he matter more than what we think. I think so. You right, nephew? Because because they gonna need an extra big on the bench. Yeah, because sure. especially if you are gonna run two injury prone guys out there, and Robert Williams and Porzingis, you are gonna need oh, some bro. insurance. <laughs> Luke Cornett. Luke Cornett. <laughs> <laughs> So that's gonna be that, man. It's tough uh, decisions that that these GMs gotta make. But shit, yeah. you got any final thoughts on the Boston Celtics? Yeah, the, uh, I'm really high on the Boston Celtics. They just gotta do a little spring clean up, man. Fix your team a little bit, a little here, a little there, and I think they'll be right there at the end, y'all, for sure. Bet it up. But hey, that's it from us, man. Next up, we're going to Cleveland. This is for you. Because I don't know how the <laughs> hell they got bounced out in the first round. But Ooh. we talked about Boston Celtics. Now we got to talk about the Cleveland Cavs and what yes, they can do heading into free agency. But, hey, that's it from us today. Y'all can follow us and follow everybody here at NBA Central Pod on all social media platforms. Any questions, comments, concerns, send it in at NBA Central Show at gmail.com. If you want to sound off on any of the NBA free agency videos we did thus far, send a text message or voicemail in at 773 773- Two seven zero two seven nine nine, so we can play your voicemail over an episode and react to. It. Hey, Bro. it's another episode of NBA Central with the Cognac Boys. I'm Bobby. That's C Dub. We gonna catch y'all on the next. This has been a presentation of the Break Break, Break Media. 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 Media.